Hello friends! Welcome to my channel, or back to my channel as the case may be. Today we are going to talk about one of the most well-recognized figures of Japanese mythology. That would be Susano. And for those who are familiar with Susano, he gets in trouble a lot. So this tale I will be telling today is Susano's Crimes and the Sun Goddess. Let's get into it. As was only proper, Susano came to take leave of his sister, Amoratsu, before returning home. His sister, familiar with his temperament, garbed herself as a warrior, put her hair up in the masculine style. Fully armored, she gathered her bow and plentiful arrows to be prepared not knowing what Susano intended. As Susano approached, she began her war dance, kicking the earth up into the air and stamping it down so hard that she sank into the earth to her thighs. Susano, for his part, protested, Sister, I come with pure intentions. Why do you greet me with acts of war? I will prove my purity to you. Let us undertake a trial by ordeal. Trials by ordeal were common in this era amongst the gods to resolve conflict. So Amaratsu agreed, beginning by requesting her brother's sword. He proffered up the sword. She promptly took the sword, broke it into pieces, washed the pieces in the heavenly well, chewed and swallowed them, before spitting back up three newborn deities. For his part, in the trial by ordeal, Susano requested his sister's beads. First, she offered the beads from the right side of her hair. Susano promptly rinsed them, chewed them, and spat them out, birthing a new goddess. He then took the beads from the left side of her hair, rinsed them, chewed them, and spat them out. And from that spat came another goddess. Then he took the beads from her hairband, from her right arm and her left arm, and performed the same actions, birthing a total of five deities. Now this is where accounts vary. For some say that Susano won this conflict because he birthed more deities. But others say that his sister, Amaratsu, won because it, they were birthed from her beads. While the conflict rages amongst the mortals who have chosen their favorite side, the story resumes at a combined location. Regardless of the result, Susano claimed victory. In his jubilant glee, he ran around, splashing through the rice paddies, damaging the ditches, breaking the levees, and in general, causing quite the ruckus. If this was all he had done, perhaps the rest of the story would not have turned so dire. But finally, after disrupting the, the rice paddies, he went to the hall of first offerings, in which he promptly defecated, Amaratsu always being a loving sister sought to placate the other gods, saying, oh, he was just drunk. It's nothing to worry about. And perhaps he thinks that growing rice is wasteful. Alas, indulging bullies, whether they be mortal or god, never ends well. Which Amaratsu learned to her great chagrin, when just a few days later, Susano captured a dappled celestial pony skinned it alive, and dropped the corpse into her weaving hall, causing such chaos and terror amongst her weaving women that one of them, she hit herself so hard with her weaving shuttle that she died. Amaratsu then hid herself within a cave, whether from fear of her brother's behavior or disgust, we do not know, for she has not yet told us. However, the consequences of her retreat, being the solar goddess, were quite dire. 
heaven and earth without her light were struck by many calamities. The eight million heavenly kami resorted to their usual tactic of gathering in council to discuss what should be done. At the end of their discussions, the heavenly kami brought together those who they thought could best resolve the problem. Bringing forth the necessary materials, they commissioned Tamanayo no Mikoto to make long strings of magatama beads. They commissioned the smith kami to make metal armor. They ordered the proper deities to make divinations ensuring their success. They uprooted, planted, and uprooted and replanted once more the evergreen sakaki bush. They hung offerings on its branches and then performed the appropriate rituals. Then, Amano Tachikara Onokami, the strong deity, hid next to the cavern where Amaratsu had hidden herself. The wily deity, Amano Uzumi, bound up her hair and revealed her breasts, dancing naked in a bucket, making a loud and rowdy scene. The eight million kami burst out laughing, hearing the great sound and revelry. Amaratsu opened the cave door to see what was happening. Amano Uzumi, the trickster, said that, oh, it's because there's a more fun deity around. After all, you are so boring hiding in your cave. Then the two ritual specialists showed Amaratsu her reflection in a mirror. Seeing her reflection, she pushed the stone slightly further away so that she could see more clearly. When the two strong arms of Aminyo Tachikara, whose name means heaven's strength, reached in and pulled her from the cave. Swiftly, they sealed the cave up so she could retreat no longer. The ritual experts then wrapped the stone in rope and sealed it so it could never be opened again. With Amaratsu out of the cave, light returned to both heaven and earth. As for Suzano, as for Suzano, the source of all this trouble, his sentence was harsh. His beard was shaved and he was fined 1,000 table offerings. His nails were pulled out and he was cast out from heaven. I hope you enjoyed this foray into Japanese mythology. I know that I am enjoying being able to share my interest in mythology with all of you. And if you have a different version of this story, because I know there are more than one, feel free to share in the comments. If you liked it, leave a like. If you want to see more content like this or more about tarot or Reiki, go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.